I had to get incredibly sick before I learned anything about what people call energy healing. Going back thousands of years in traditional Chinese medicine, this medicine has focused intensely on a cultural concept called qi. Now, I personally do not translate qi as energy. It is a very difficult cultural concept to translate. But in this video, we'll talk a lot about these aspects of what qi is, where to spot the imbalances or blockages of flow in the body, and a practice you can begin doing day to day that has been lately really, really improving my life from a health point of view. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hein, board licensed doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book Master of the Day. So let's jump in here. Now let's talk about Qigong, healing, and the channels of traditional Chinese medicine. I mean, after all, one of the most distinguishing features of this specific kind of medicine is the acupuncture channels. You can find an easy correlate in conventional medicine for how many medications come from plants. So you could practice traditional Chinese medicine by just learning which formula to give for which illness, and that's fine. And there are great doctors that do that. But what is so wholly unique about this profession is understanding what are these channels? What are these acupuncture points? Are are they just physical material fascial planes or is there something else going on physiologically or energetically bioelectrically that may be deeper and more subtle i think my answer is all of the above so one day I was speaking to one of my mentors and we were speaking about this cultural concept of the word qi. A lot of lay people, especially the white practitioners of traditional Chinese medicine call it energy. And I really don't like the word because I don't think you can necessarily translate qi as energy because it is more complex than that. But what my mentor said was, you have to understand what is going on with the qi dynamic or qi movement in your body before you begin trading patients and recognizing what is going on in their body. So what is this if it's not necessarily translating as energy. One of our oldest, most important medical books is called The Treatise on Cold Damage by a doctor named Zhang Zhongjing. Now this doctor has one particular chapter on what he calls running piglet qi. And what this chapter is really all about is basically anxiety and panic attacks. So a direct quote, in this chapter, this is a book from around the year 200, 250 AD, a few hundred years after Christ. And he says, the patient feels a sensation of qi surging up into the chest and they feel as if they're going to die. And then it goes away and it comes back later sometime. In this case, he used the word qi. And maybe a modern person or someone who's sensitive might say, I felt all this energy or sensation in my chest. When I get a panic attack, right? People like to rub their chest or like hold their chest or press their chest. It feels good. But can we say that's energy? A modern doctor or scientist would say, that's stress hormones, that's adrenaline, that's cortisol that is causing that sensation in the chest of panic, sheer terror, waking up in the middle of the night with terror. Not that it's energy, but you can understand why maybe these ancient people were trying to describe this sensation in the location of the body. That is complex interplay of phenomena, circulation, lymphatic flow, gas even, right? And certainly hormones. When we talk about panic attacks or running piglet chi. Running piglet's a funny metaphor or analogy, right? You can see running around screaming. If you've seen someone with a panic attack, that has to run outside and run or go for a bike ride to get that sensation to go away. In this scenario, chi is maybe stuff. It's the interplay of many different physiological pathways here. But recognizing what's going on and where it is going on is the essence of healing. And that's also why I've put together that free root cause quiz. It's the first link in the description and basically will help you figure out what organ or physiological pathway is likely the cause of your chronic health symptoms. What is the root? What is the branch? And I've also put together an awesome link to probably 30 related videos for each organ if you're having symptoms. I mean, it's a pretty exhaustible resource that goes into a lot of these symptoms, so you can check it out. Now let's go into a simple exercise here called sensing the subtle body. And it's going to be broken up into three parts. One is the location of the chi or subtle body. Two is the direction of the chi or subtle body. And three is the quality of chi. So let's talk about the location of chi in the body. If you just close your eyes for a second here and you just do a quick body scan, I'm paying attention to my head, my sinuses, my throat, my stomach, my low abdomen, groin, knees, hips, feet, toes. Where do you notice sensation? And I wanna call your attention there a lot like the way when you have a stomach ache, you're suddenly aware of your stomach. And when you don't have a stomach ache, you're not aware of your stomach. So I notice when I do the body scan, I feel a little like discomfort, kind of like a gnawing in my stomach a little bit. And I had a cup of coffee this morning. Sometimes that's hard on my stomach, gives me a little indigestion. So maybe that's what I'm noticing now. And then I think lower, okay, I feel a little bit of abdominal distension. I feel pressure, like a little bit of discomfort, tightness in the low abdomen below the belly button. So first start by locating where this chi sensation is in the body. You might notice I have a little bit of pressure in my forehead. 
little restriction in my sinuses, a little bit of a knot in the throat or a little bit of phlegminess in the throat, some tightness in my chest or a little bit of discomfort right at the highest part of my stomach. Noticing where that sensation is of stuff or sensation is understanding what is the chi dynamic doing in your body? Is the dysfunction in the GI, in the sinuses, in your nervous system, in your bladder, in your intestines? Where is it mostly? Pay attention to that throughout the day. The second thing is the direction of chi. So for example, I notice when I have a cup of coffee many days, which is why I don't drink it daily, I drink a cup of coffee and I feel cold. I feel a little shaky. I notice like an elevating sensation, like I'm animated and I'm chatty and I speak faster and I'm a little more prone to nervous tics, right? Cracking my neck or just Fidgeting, this is an acceleration. The opposite of someone who's giving off a depressed feeling or depressed vibe. You know the feeling you get coming off someone's body when they're super depressed. Yeah, my life's just been really hard. You feel the deceleration of the nervous system, the deceleration of the chi body, it's going down versus anxiety, energy's going up. So what's the direction for you? Just start with up or down. Is it up, more anxious, down, more depressed? Up, more animated, down, less animated. Is it inward or outward? That's a high level practice for inner regulation. Finally, what is the quality of chi? When I palpate somebody's abdomen, the first thing I feel, is it cold or is it warm? When I look at somebody's complexion, is it red or is it pale? That indicates heat versus cold in traditional Chinese medicine. Heat can be someone who has a lot of inflammation, internal heat in the body. Cold can be someone who has poor digestion or anemia. Paying attention to where is the chi body? Where's the sensation? What's the direction? Up, down, out, in and then the quality, the abdominal distension, right? I'm feeling like a lot of bloating pressure, or I'm feeling gnawing in my stomach, or I'm feeling too full, or I'm feeling really hungry. That will help you understand what is going on with the subtle body, and then you can learn to do practices to regulate that. A final thought here on how to make your life your medicine. So let's say, for example, I learned from doing this chi body exercise, this guy, Dr. Alex, has too much ascending energy. I push myself a lot, I have that temperament. And while my physical body is, I have a relatively weaker constitution, a lifelong prone to digestive problems, lifelong asthmatic, a lot of these genetic issues, my shen, the spirit, the nervous system is hyperdrive for me, right? You can feel it. I have a very spirited nervous system. I think quick, I move quick, I walk quick. That is ascending energy. People like that should not ever touch stimulants or coffee. Unless they are in a very regulated state where they're sleeping well, consistently and they don't feel like they're dysregulated. So for me, anything that causes ascending of the chi dynamic, I need to avoid. Ascending energy should never be touched by someone like me. It also reminds me that what are the other practices that generate the opposite of my life, to me, my life, my medicine? Seated meditation, time in nature and solitude, all the introvert practices, sitting and reading, quiet time, all of these solitary practices that help gather your resources are descending of the chi body in nature. For someone like me that is prone to this floating, pushing upward of energy all the time, I'm prone to the problems of people that have that dynamic. Anxiety, palpitations, insomnia, hyperactivity from pushing myself too much. I have to be careful of that. So for you, it might be the opposite. Thinking, what practices have the opposite effect? If it's too much outward energy, what causes this? If it's too much upward energy, what causes this? Practice closing your eyes, feeling that in your body, and you've just awakened the most important practice for self-regulation, minimizing how much you get sick that you will ever do in your life. All right, guys, that was my masterclass in regulating the chi body and the energy dynamic in your body. Again, if you wanna work with me personally, I see a limited number of new patients every single month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. If that interests you, go to the info, the description below the video. You can call me or book a visit directly sometimes. And on top of that, you can also just go to dralexhyingcom forward slash clinic. Before you go, I have another great video on varying kinds of energy healing in the chi body right here.